Oh. That was not the right way to climb in here. So most people understand the idea behind setting things level. Most people understand the idea behind setting things centered and equal distance between two objects, front to back, but not everybody gets the concept of square, where if you measure from back corner to front corner, and you do that on from both sets of corners, crisscross, there we go, uh, if your measurements are the same, it's square. Sometimes people think that they can get close enough. This tale is about one that I read about online on a, I don't know, grassroots motorsports forum or something like that, a uh, post from a while back, that someone was measuring from one point on their car for everything in the front and the rear. And it was going to throw off all of their measurements for where the front axle actually was and where the rear axle actually was. Now, when I first set up this front end, I spent a lot of time finding the spot that I could measure from repeatedly to get the same measurements left and right, and then use those points also to measure to the rear. Sometimes that's a point uh, around the rear suspension where the original factory sheet metal still exists. Uh, in this case, if you can see, it's these ovals here in the front, these holes are supposed to be in the same spot front to back on the car. Now I did find other measurements that where you could measure off the front uh, cross member in you know the bottom of the radiator support, but that's not always a good idea, especially on this car. Something pulled, it looks like someone pulled this car with a chain at one time and it bulged out the front of the cross member and I cannot use that for reliable measurements. So what would happen if you picked one point on the car to measure everything, say in the front suspension? Well, I did a little mock-up on the computer to make sure that I didn't add any trigonometry errors into doing it by, by hand. And basically I found that if you picked one point on the back of the car to set your front cross member to, and you thought you could get it square, if you were one inch off your center line, say you ran a string from front to rear, which I have on this car, uh, and you picked a point maybe aligned with the rear spring mounts, and you said, I'm gonna measure off the center point, I'm gonna measure to this side of the cross member and this side of the cross member, and uh, I'll square it up that way, it'll be close enough. And I got a, I got a, uh, where's my, uh, I got a framing square, I can do this. I can, uh, you know, I'll find my measurement to the front and then I'll put my framing square in there and check and, and this is a terrible example because it's rusty and I don't believe that it's square or straight. I use it for real rough measurements on things, not on this car. Uh, if you were one inch off center, so you got that spot wrong, and you measured to the front cross member, right side and left side, and you made them the same distance, if you use this car for a reference, which is a 108 inch wheelbase, uh, 56 inch track width, you would be at a point where either your front cross member would be 0.6 degrees tilted. So in this case, the front right or the right side of your front cross member would be farther forward than the left side. And the angle would be about 0.6 degrees. Now, if you didn't center your cross member and you let it float so you made it square with the frame and you measured from that point to each side, you'd be about an inch to the passenger side in this case. That's a lot. When you're talking about a car that doesn't have a lot of room for error, you do not want your front track an inch off to the right. Now, if you were picking a point that was four inches off center in the back. In the front, if you centered up your, your cross member, you would be 2.6 degrees off kilter. If you centered it up between, or if you let it float and you squared it to the front, you'd be three inches to the passenger side. Now, 
That's kind of what this guy on the forum was doing. He was picking one point in the back and he was saying, this is my reference point. But if you're off by a fraction of an inch, you might get away with it. You got enough adjustability in the front, probably. If you're an inch off in the back, you're asking for trouble in the front. Same, same scenario if your frame rails are not straight. This frame, well, it's not a frame, it's a front subframe and a rear subframe, it's a unibody. So if this front had been bonked in an accident and was bent a little bit, or the back end was hit, you're gonna have a bad time because your measurements are not gonna line up. Now, if you have a car that's damaged, you're gonna have to, at some point, pick your reference points. I was originally gonna pick the outside shell of the car, the outside of the fenders at some point, but I decided after crawling around underneath it, that the frame, the front subframe, rear subframe, they look really good. I didn't find a lot of wrinkles. Uh, it looked like factory stampings, factory welds as far as I could tell. So I assumed that the front of the rear suspension was in the correct spot. So when I measured to these front holes, like I showed you earlier back there, they were really, really, really close to being perfect from side to side. The front, like I said, not quite as much. Now, if I had chosen to use the fender outsides, I would be half an inch off. Because as we found in, uh, I don't know, a few months back, the passenger side rear fender is pushed in a little bit because that quarter panel got hit in an accident at one point. Uh, when they fixed it, they didn't push the fender out quite enough. So when I put the rear tires in, the, if when I, when I set my clearance from the frame rail to the inside of the tires and I make it equal between each side, that side looks like it's pressing out, it's the tires out a little more. It's not so much that you're really gonna notice unless you walk to one side, really look carefully, walk to the other side, really look carefully and the fenders are going to get uh, rolled. I don't want to cut the fenders and flare them if I don't need to, so I'm going to try and roll them first. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. So with this car, fortunately, the foundation of the car looks straight. And when I leveled it on this chassis table, it did not take much to set the body on the four mount points on my chassis table, which is as close as I can get to perfectly level. It took a lot of messing around. I even spray painted the floor where the feet of the chassis table sit. So if I happen to bump the thing, I can push it back right where it was supposed to sit. So now how close is close enough? Now I'm pretty sure the guy in that forum post got his chassis figured out in the end. He got enough advice and enough, um, harassment maybe, I don't know what you want to call it, that he did not continue with his plan to use a single point for the whole chassis. Now, this car, how accurate have I been? You see my thumbnail from this uh, upper mount, upper control arm mount one side to the other, it's not perfectly level. It bothers me a little bit. Now, I did use a quality level, and as far as I know, it's accurate. But can you trust a bubble level? Can you trust a tiny little cube level? This is not an expensive one. This was not expensive, but I believe it's effective. When I compare them to each other on a really flat surface, really a uh, level surface, they're pretty dang close. If you don't have one of these, but you do have one of these, check. Well, you can check your cube level too. Pick a spot that doesn't move, a hard surface, put it on there, read it, flip it around the other way, 180, read the other side, see if there's a difference between the two. They should say that one side is higher by the same amount. You can do the same with a level. Now, one thing I do when I'm visualizing how level is it, if I set this to perfectly level in the car and it, the frame looks good, but if I sit it on, if I sit this on the frame of the car and it looks good, perfect. Now, 
what if it's a little off? It can be hard to visualize. How, how much lower are you? you? Okay, so you're measuring 27 inches apart on a frame rail. That's what this front width is. Take a little shim. Take an eighth inch shim and put it under there. Is that it? You know, does it, is that make you level? That's how far out it is at that point. Sometimes you think, go, dang, that's really close. You start putting little tiny shims in one side and get that bubble as close as you can get to perfect. You will get a measurement. You have something you can measure to understand how out of level it is. Now, my car is as close as I can get it with strings, levels, tape measure, that kind of thing. And don't use different tape measures on the same part of your project. It can be really tempting to have a couple of different tape measures kicking around the shop and go, oh, they're the same. You measure something on your car with this one and you've left this one on your fab table and you're gonna use that to measure your, your piece you're gonna cut or one on this side, one on that side, you're gonna measure it to the floor. Don't do it. The, the simplest way to, have, to be screwed up with that is this little foot either does not move properly or the holes are worn out or it's bent or whatnot. The other way is, look how worn that is right there. See how worn those edges are? I gotta be really careful using this tape to not use it for anything uh, critical because I cannot measure proper 16th or 30, 30 seconds. I mean, you can get half and quarter, maybe you can get 16th, but sorry, eighths. You can see the eighth mark there. If I'm going to measure something small and important here, like a, a bracket on the front frame, and I go, oh, three and, um, well, I don't know what, 11 sixteenths, sure. And then you go over to your fab table and you go, three and 11 sixteenths bracket, that'll be perfect. I can measure it easily on this one. You just, you're setting yourself up for failure. Don't do it. Now, I think I've said something about where is this car at? You know, like two or three times now. Where is this car at? When I had the front cross member welded in and I put these pads in for the upper control arm and I put the arms on and the spindles and everything and I started measuring things and I put, I put my big level across it. I found that the, it was very close side to side, but this little guy told me that the arm angle and the arms point up a little bit when they, from the mount to the spindle. The arm angle was slightly different, driver's side to passenger side. And I had to dial in different amounts of, uh, I don't know what you call it, these, these slotted holes here. I've forgotten the term for what those are. When I adjusted the caster and got it to be the same on both sides, I found that one arm was pointed slightly farther back than the other, and I've forgotten which one now. If it's small amounts, it's not gonna be a big deal. But if it's large amounts, and you measured from a wrong spot somewhere, then you could have a car that does not wanna go straight down the road, and you're gonna fight your alignment for a long time. Speaking of uh, caster and camber and everything, I had these little plates made up. They go on my spindle and bolt to the hub, hub, the knuckle, and this is near vertical, as close as I can get measuring it. And you know, this is a lasered edge. Uh, this is as close as I can get. And I don't know if I have footage of it. I probably do somewhere. But I would bolt this to my spindle and then I'd put my little indicator on there and I could adjust my caster. And then moving it to this face, I could adjust my camber. So I set up this front end put some tires on it and put the fenders on and well, after I did this part and look to see, does it visually look correct? And it did. Now I'm really tempted on doing this for my final alignment before I put it on its tires and drive it for the first time. I might use this method. Uh, it might help me with bump steer as well. So I think, I think if this works out well, I'll have a file for this. Uh, this is a Mustang II spindle and knuckle arrangement. Uh, it, so maybe, maybe it'd be helpful for someone. I will put that out there 
if I get good numbers. Because after after I align it here in the shop and lock everything down, I will take it to an alignment shop and have them check it out. But I'm pretty sure we can get dang close because I have this passenger side one, driver side one's over there. I had to bevel out for the radius on the spindle mount. But yeah, in any case, do use a level. Do use an angle cube. Do make sure they're accurate. Pick multiple points that you can compare, front to back, left to right, until you find the sweet spot to measure off of every time. For the rest of this project, I am using these two oval holes in the frame because when I set up my front end and measure it to the back, it that's it. Those are factory holes. They're in the correct spot. Another thing to do is get a new tape measure. If your tape measure looks questionable, get a new one. They're not that expensive. If your level is broken, I got one of these where I have arrows pointed on it because it's only good for that orientation because if you use the bubble level on this end of it, it's not gonna be accurate, but this one was good. I should throw that one away and only use this one. I should really toss it. And this, like I said, it's not accurate. I know it's not. There is a way to check these. You put it up against a known square edge or, or you put it on something flat and you trace, right? And then you flip it over and compare. Um, there's ways to do that. And there's even ways to tune these and readjust them. You basically, if it's bent, you're hammering on, you know, if it's bent this way, you're hammering here to expand this metal out and put it. These don't cost that much. And there's some that have nice features etched into them. Uh, this one is really hard to read. I really only used it uh, seriously on the pump house on our property that I rebuilt. And the concrete pad for that pump house is not level. The walls are not square. So this, it worked just fine. It fit right into that mess that that structure is. But in any case, I digress. Make sure you have good tools. You don't need fancy ones, just good quality ones. Throw away the junk and be particular about where you measure on your car. Don't sometimes measure here and sometimes measure there. So now that the weather has turned and it's raining like crazy, I plan on getting back on this car. I got a couple things left to do outside before winter hits, but we're back in the shop here real soon. All right. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time.